Hi, this is Ray Lee. I'm coming at you at 34,000 feet, and we'd like to welcome you to Mile Point TV. Hi, Flyers. Good morning. Eric Mueller here with Mile Point TV. Day three of Star Megadoo 5, and today's the day we get on our charter. We're saying goodbye to Toronto and hello to Tucson. We're all about to board our Boeing 737-900ER, so come on along. This Boeing 737-900ER has some nice features. There's direct TV in every seat, which, you know, goes a long way towards making a flight tolerable. And there's also good old normal power ports in every seat, so you can just plug in your iPad or your iPhone. Now, because it's a Megadoo charter flight, they're doing some special stuff for us. We've got this nice United amenity kit with powered headphones, a pen, some mints, and they're doing first-class meal service throughout the plane. So there's actually a menu, even back here in economy, for our flight to Tucson and on to San Francisco. They really take care of us on these Megadoo charters. It's going to be a great flight. So you might remember the last Megadoo when we were on the 787 Dreamliner and we had a chance to check out the crew rest area on the plane. For some reason, I'm having a hard time finding the crew rest area here on the 737. So we're here in the rear galley and I'm here with Tammy and Tammy is going to make us a special drink. Now Tammy, tell us what you're going to make. Well, first of all, it's called Science in the Sky. And basically what we're going to do is show you what happens when you combine a couple of our drinks. So if you pour a little bit of milk in a glass, and then you add tonic water to it. Give it, just give it a couple minutes. That, that, I just don't know about that. You definitely don't want to combine these together when you're flying, but I'll show you as I pour it into here that it actually has become a really thick substance. Oh. So it, it kind of separates, it's probably a little hard to see, but. Um, does become a really thick substance. <laughs> there will be collective later. And then Aaron will Normally if there's a stir up. stick and you put it in, it'll stand straight up for you. It just shows you how crazy it is. And if you're using a cream substance, like actual half and half, it's even worse. <laughs> this is a bad idea. A bad, bad idea. Don't drink the milk and tonic. Thank you, Tammy, for science in the sky. Thank you. So it's a charter flight, which means it's nothing like a regular flight. The curtain between first and economy is long gone. Everyone's having fun mingling around. You can see it's a big party atmosphere here on the plane. Everyone's drinking, having a good time, meeting new friends. People have even sort of made their own lounge area, just hanging out and saying hi. Tucson is the home of the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group, better known as the Boneyard. Megadoo attendees enjoyed a bus tour of this sprawling facility, which houses over 4,400 out-of-service aircraft from all branches of the U.S. military. Aircraft in storage ranged from the smallest single-seat training jets and helicopters to B-52 bombers and C-130 transport planes. Tell me your favorite moment of the Megadoo and why. I'm um, getting around around the Boneyard. It's great to see all the aircraft that have come well before my time. Um, things I've only got to see on TV before. It's great to see them in person. I think going to the Boneyard and seeing all those aircraft, that was an eye-opener, seeing some that I hadn't seen and some that you won't ever see again. So that was outstanding. Uh, favorite part of the Megadoo was the Ritz-Carlton party. Nice big uh, open bar, a lot of food, drinks, getting to meet everyone and talk shop, like, as I call it. It was a good time for me. Uh, I think I enjoyed the uh, uh, session with Air Canada where we got a chance to tell them how to, uh, what they could do to improve the in-flight experience and the uh, on-the-ground experience. I have a lot of experience with Air Canada and I, it was a chance to actually voice my concerns about some of the changes that they're making. Well, see, seeing as I showed up at this gig this morning at around 6 o'clock, yes. today's pretty good. Your favorite moment has been arriving today. Uh, making it, not being left behind in Tucson, because it briefly looked like that was going to be a thing that was going to happen, but I guess I shouldn't speak too soon. I think having drinks on the floor in economy class was my favorite moment. I see, and why is that? Um, because usually I would get kicked out or something along those lines. Meeting new people and making great friends. I came here not knowing anybody, and I'm leaving here with a bunch of great people that I'm sure I'll keep in touch with. This is my first time on, and I think it's been a fun journey to see how everyone's met each other, and the group just continues to get bigger and bigger with each time, so it's been a lot of fun. Going out to random karaoke and having fun with friends that we just met on this, group, on this uh, trip, it was good. It was on the ground in Tucson. Um, all those planes, they're gorgeous engineering. It's just great. They're huge. They've done hard work. It's, you know, they're airplanes. It's great. Tito's vodka. I just never had it before, and it's really good. Oh, my favorite moment was definitely during the uh, 
Ramoa luggage tour and watching the lady with the zippers who it was off and she took two teeth out and then it was just right. Okay, that was like unbelievable. It's kind of crew on the flight. I mean, they brought me extra cookies. It was awesome. Partying in the plane with all you guys. Winning uh, 75K status on Air Canada. <laughs> the partner at uh, the Pima Air Force was fantastic. My favorite moment is reconnecting with old friends. It's always a party when you're on the Megadoo. I don't know to wear though. Hey. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad I caught you. Can you tell me your favorite moment of the Megadoo so far and why? The spacious lavatories. It's uh, a, a real treat. <laughs> Upon landing in San Francisco, our charter flight taxied straight to a hangar where United had a very full evening planned for us, including a sweeping tour of their maintenance base. I'm here in the United maintenance hangar and behind me is a 777 engine. Now, this is really amazing how they have this set up. The engines come in and they start at station one and the engine stays at each station for 40 hours. And for the first six stations, they're disassembling. So it takes a total of 10 days to break the engine completely down. By the time it gets to station six, the engine is completely down. It's just a skeleton, a shell of an engine. The parts are being sent out to refurbish and bring everything up to speed. They come back, it keeps moving around the carousel and over 19 days, the engine is put back together. So so in about a month, the whole thing is ready to go. They send it right back out the door and onto a wing. This is an integrated drive generator from a 747. This is essentially what takes the thrust from the engine, the power from the engine, and turns it into electricity to power the plane. Now one of these can power two city blocks, just to give you an idea of how much they can put out. So if you look behind me, this is one of the last 757s that they're changing out the engine pylon on. Apparently Boeing issued a safety warning and said they were seeing some cracking in engine pylons. Now it's not necessarily on this plane, but the FAA says that that means all the operators, in this case United Airlines, has to take off the engine pylon and fix the part where some problems have been seen. So this is the last of United's fleet that's getting upgraded and it takes about 30 days for them to do this and then it goes right back out and into service. Behind me, this is an Airbus A319 under undergoing its C check. There's A check, B check. A C check happens about every 5,000 hours and when that interval comes up the airplane comes rolling in here and the mechanics swarm it for anything that might be out of spec. They test everything from the sheet metal to the cabin equipment, to the radios. Every single piece is checked for anything that might be out of alignment or off spec. It takes about a thousand hours or nine days for them to check everything but once everything clears it's back to the sky. One nice surprise was seeing dogs from the Police and Working Canine Foundation at the party and learning more about this charity, a favorite of the Mile Point community. I'm here with Louise Tully, and she is the Vice President of the Police and Working Canine Foundation. Can you tell me a little bit about what your foundation does? Yes, we are here to protect our working police dogs and uh, other dogs such as the federal dogs, state dogs, California Highway Patrol, sheriffs, and what we do is we help protect them with both bulletproof vests as well as canine trauma kits that help the handler um, take an eight-hour course, learn how to do anything they need to do if their dog is ever injured or exposed to anything. and. Um, we're here tonight at Megadoo. We're really excited with our little canines. Well, we think it's great that y'all are out here, and it's such an interesting charity. You know, I've never heard of one devoted to the dog's safety versus the human safety. I like that a lot. Well, many times with the budget cuts of recent years, the dogs are the last on the list, and yet they are our very loyal companions and protectors. Here at the San Francisco airport, they help by detecting everything from drugs, currency, explosives, um, other substances. So out on the streets of San Francisco, we have patrol dogs, explosives detection dogs, narcotics detection dogs. So all across our state and the country, working dogs work every day kind of behind the scenes. So that's what we're here for, to help protect them. I think that is a fantastic charity, and if people want to learn more, they can go to CoverYourCanine.com? CoverYourCanine.com, and they can also get one of our little Malinois that went on the Megadoo. Well, there you have it, the end of another fantastic Megadoo, Star Megadoo 5, one filled with really unprecedented behind-the-scenes access. And for that, I just want to say thank you so much to Marriott, Ramoa, Air Canada, and United. I'm Eric Mueller, coming to you from a maintenance hangar here at San Francisco International Airport. For Milepoint TV, we'll see you on the next Megadoo.